Hello and welcome back to Restoration DIY. In this episode, I'll be turning a bowl from a chunk of sequoia. I haven't worked with this species before, so without further ado, let's get into it. This blank had already been cut roughly to round, so I just had to mark the centre and drill a hole for the woodworm screw, and after that, I could fix it to the lathe. And with the blank securely fixed to the chuck, I could begin turning. First job, as ever, is to get the workpiece to round. For this, I use the half inch bowl gouge, shear scraping to begin with, then switching to push cuts. I still need to refine the grind angles on this gouge, but it's close to how I like it. I didn't want to take too much off, as I wanted to retain as much of the light coloured wood as possible. I was also aware that tear out was a bit of an issue, and I wasn't sure how the finished piece would change shape, as the blank had been cut from the centre of a log. But as soon as the flat spots had been removed, I had a new tool that I wanted to try out. more light passes shear scraping with a gouge and a clean up with a scraper and it was new tool time. I have bought myself a quarter inch bead cutter. This one is made by Robert Sorby and this would just be a trial run for a later project. I wouldn't be keeping it on this bowl. First impressions were great, the tool made a consistent cut with no catches. There was a bit of tear out but nothing too bad, so I continued to cut half a dozen or so beads. I quickly realised that I had to space them apart a bit more than I'd thought. As I cut each new bead, the sides of the tool made a flat spot on the adjacent one. Also getting them all to cut to a consistent depth was a bit of a challenge. Anyhow, this is just an experiment. After a bit of sanding to see how they cleaned up, it was time to get on with the real task at hand, so off they came. The half inch bowl gouge made quick work of removing the beads. It was at this point I decided to add a pedestal. Up to now I'd toyed with the idea of making a big bowl, but I thought a more complex shape would show off the grain to better effect. With the beads gone, I could concentrate on forming the base and creating the cutout. I used the gouge to shape the outer edge of the base, then I removed material, working on both sides of the cut to get to the rough shape of the pedestal. I could only do so much with a half inch gouge. Running into the cutout, I was risking getting a catch on the opposite side of the cut. So after removing as much as I dare, I switched over to the 3 8 bowl gouge, which is smaller, obviously, and it has more of a swept back grind. With the 3 8 bowl gouge I was able to cut much deeper into the cutout, but I still had to take care not to gouge out a big lump. As before, I worked on either side of the cut, slowly getting deeper. I really wanted to end up with a sharp crisp angled cut, but I was running the risk of taking too much out and getting the bowl and pedestal all out of proportion. So with the pedestal more or less to shape, I concentrated on fine tuning the base and blending and fairing the upper section of the bowl to form a gentle curve from the cutout up into the side. And to finish off, I used a carbide cutter to remove the heavier tool marks. I still wasn't 100% happy with the shape of the pedestal, but I decided to leave it for now. 
I sanded the bowl with 80 grit to check for any tool marks and I moved on to cutting the mortise. Cutting the mortise was very easy. I used a dovetail cutter to define the outer edge and form the dovetail and then I removed most of the inner material with a 3 8 bowl gouge leaving a small bit for the tailstock to bite into. After that I couldn't resist going back to refine the shape of the pedestal cutout, this time with a detail spindle gouge. This has an even more swept back grind and with it I was able to steadily reshape the cut, being extra careful not to get a catch. All done and it's much better. A bit of sanding with 80 grit to tidy it up and next I had a bit of a repair to do. A knot in the bowl needed some attention. I used black starbond super glue to fill the voids with some accelerator to speed up the cure time. That was finished with some power sanding, both off and on the lathe. I followed that with the removal of the last piece in the mortise, then I sanded the whole of the outside from 80 to 400 grit. Next I applied a finish. I'll quickly skip through this and show it in detail at the end. First I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. Then I applied a shellac based sanding sealer, denibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad. Next came Yorkshire grit thoroughly cleaned away before adding a single coat of friction polish, another shellac based product which was buffed to give a deep luster. With the finish applied, I turned the bowl around and fixed it to the forge or chuck using the mortise with the tailstock for additional support. Then I could move on to hollowing out the inside. The bowl felt very secure as I began to hollow out using the 3 8 bowl gouge. Working from the outside in, I was able to remove material cutting down leaving a piece in the middle for the tailstock. However, as I said at the beginning, I haven't worked with Sequoia before and whilst this was a very dry blank and incredibly easy to cut, it also had a surprise waiting for me. Stopping the lathe to retighten the chuck should have given me a hint as to what was happening, but without thinking anything of it, I continued cutting away material. Then the centerpiece cracked, which I thought I'd loosen the chuck again, so after I retightened it, I continued removing more material. I carefully whittled away the piece in the centre and then I set about removing weight from the side of the bowl. I hoped this would make the workpiece more stable as I was still having trouble keeping it balanced and centred on the chuck. Once the upper section was trimmed down the bowl was much more stable and I could get the bottom of the bowl down to near the finished thickness. I was aiming for a wall thickness on the thicker side of 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch. The rim needed a bit of work to remove a few nicks, but I figured I would finalize the shape after I'd removed some more from the inside. I wasn't far from being done, so I kept on going, practicing the elusive continuous cut from the rim to the center of the bowl. With the end in sight I made a few more cuts with a gouge before switching to the scraper. I figured I'd give it a go to blend the inside surface into one gentle curve. After a quick check I thought I'd use the scraper to clean the rim up. Yeah big mistake. 
The thing that had been causing the chuck to come loose finally showed itself. The mortise was split in two places. The scraper caught a crack in the rim and off it came. Dam and blast, or words to that effect. The damage wasn't so bad. I managed to collect all the smaller bits and I superglued them back into their respective positions. But I had to recut the mortise. This meant finding a way to hold it. I used the cold jaws with the rubber buttons lightly pressed onto the inside face of the bowl with the tailstock holding it securely in place. But the mortise still had one more go at messing things up. Whilst recutting the recess, one of the super glue repairs let go and had to be redone. This time I used a bit more glue and a clamp to hold it until it was well and truly fixed. Second time round. Whilst I recut the mortise, I also cut it deeper to get below the crack repairs into fresh material. The base needed reflattening, and I had to clean up the side of the bowl, which had some scrapes and scuffs from its excursion off the lathe. Using a combination of the skew chisel and shear scraping with a gouge, I removed a thin layer off the surface, just enough to clean up the damaged areas. And with that done, I sanded from 80 to 400 grit. After sanding, I applied the finish, same as before, but I'll show the full finishing process at the end. And we're back to where we were before the mortise broke. With the bowl turned around, I could finish off the inside. It was running a little bit off center, so I used a 3 8 bowl gouge to recut the inside face. Then using the gouge, I carefully worked on the rim, cutting the top with a slight slope towards the inside. This was then blended into the outside face using a large negative rake scraper. The rim needed a little bit of fine tuning to remove one or two dents and then I finished off the inside using the gouge. I made a few passes to level the surface and to thin down the upper section, then a final go with the carbide cutter to remove the tool marks and it was done and ready for sanding from 80 to 400 grit. After sanding, I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. Then I applied two coats of shellac sanding sealer, which are denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. Next up, Yorkshire Grit, just a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Then two coats of chestnut friction polish, buffed away with clean paper towel.
and to finish, a single coat of Hampshire Sheen gloss finishing wax to seal and protect the surface. That's it, another project finished. I learned a lot doing this one. In the future, I'll try a tenon to hold the workpiece. I think that may be safer, especially with brittle wood like Sequoia. But all things considered, I'm very happy with it, and I hope you like it as well. The colour of wood is very striking, and the lighter patch just adds a bit of contrast. With that, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, it really helps the channel out. A thumbs up will be great, and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.